it is quite common to hear that the best strand titan build for players to use will be the one that consists of a banner of war, one two punch shotgun and symphoseps. Don't believe me? Why not take a look at the vast amount of solo dungeon runs done by players who use the following to maximize damage but also having a large survival rate? So why am I talking about this you may ask? It's just that when it comes down to these type of builds, not everyone can master it for legendary endgame content. Onslaught is a type of mode where that sort of build can work and also not work. Hence why Precious Scars is probably the best exotic if you want to feel really safe while still being able to pack a punch quite easily. So today we're going to explore one of the most effective builds that Glimmer can buy that not only provides safety and damage by numbers but also wide scale team support just from playing. It's pretty much a all rounder build perfect for any activity in mind. Let's make a start. So we all know how strong Strand Titans can be in Destiny 2, and with the introduction of Banner of War, it makes them one of the tankiest class to use for everyday activities. Applying this knowledge, having something like Precious Scars on hand will increase survivability by 99%, and then combining that with Quicksilver Storm, Banner of War, and Threat of Isolation creates the ideal build we are after. Precious Scars Azotic Trait, Kit Sigu, states that a final blows from weapons with a damage type matching your subclass energy creates a burst healing around you that grants allies restoration. After reviving or being revived, you gain an aura that provides overshields to you and nearby allies. In terms of its usefulness, this will extend our survivability and recovery rate by quite a lot as long as we net kills with our strand weapon. This is great to use for legend onslaught or grandmaster activities as combining this with banner of war and with the mail it simply allows you to play 100% safe. This is where your strand weapon comes into play, as any strand weapon is finally used here, but having Quicksilver Storm is the common practice that I and many other players have chosen to pick. It's strong, has really good damage against everyone, has great secondary feature that most other weapons don't have, and it's hard to underestimate the sheer firepower it has against most other exotics. Of course, Rufus Fury and Perpetualus with their given god roles are good alternatives if you don't have the given exotic, but the extra damage that Quicksilver has will play a big part with activating Precious Scar's effect quickly when compared to the following. For subclass traits, these are what I went for. Enter the fray where destroying a tangle or casting a sewer grants Wither Mel for you and nearby allies. While you have Wither Mel, your melee regeneration is increased. You'll then want Banner of War where defeating a target with melee, sword, or finisher raises the banner that will continuously heal you and your allies within its radius. Defeating targets will also increase its pulse rate, but also get an melee and sword buff. A threat of isolation where landing rapid precision hits emit a 7 burst from the target. Threat of transmutation while you have with a male weapon finder blows will create tangle. Threat of generation where D and damage generate grenade energy. And threat of continuity where suspend. Unravel and several effects apply to targets have increased duration. As you have noticed, we don't have any fragments for creating woven melt as that is not needed when you have entered the fray aspect. Since Quick Silver Storm, a sort of trait allows us to create tangles and kills, this will make sure that Federal Transmutation and Federal Continuity stay active as long as we net the gearing kills provided. Expanding on this further, having shackle grenades will stun enemies and allow us to use our midi to activate Banner of War effect straight away and start the ball running for the build. Overall this will affect Threat of Generation which is self explanatory and then Threat of Isolation builds into the entirety of the build with the great effect of weakened targets damage by 30%. A 30% against a boss or tormentor is huge for everyone involved and with this in build in mind it will allow users to survive his one shot hits by just a bit more. For the mods and stats, Resilience, Discipline and Strength will play a big part within the build itself. Resilience at tier 10 will grant us a 30% damage reduction on top of the Rover Mel effect. With how tanky the build already is for players, maxing this stat out allows us to do our job more effectively as time goes on. This can be reduced if you wish, but quite honestly, why would you? The Discipline should be at tier 10 for a 1 minute 16 cooldown when using Shackle Grenades. Because of how prolific third generation is, you don't need to have font or kickstart mods available. 
This allows you to expand your armor slot vaults to be more viable instead of needing to rely on armor charges all the time. Having impact induction for a 12% regen energy is enough for the build as it stands. You can add further mods if you feel the regen factor is still not enough, but honestly, the build is pretty fine with how it is. The strength being at tier 5 is a personal choice since our subclass trait will support its vigorous effect. As this won't be enough to support the Banner of War knock on effect, having momentum transfer times 2 for 17%, invigoration for 10%, and outreach for 12% should be enough to cover the standard recharge rate of the standard ability. Additional mods you should have are charged up and stacks on stacks, which will give you a plus 1 to charge stacks and allow your orbs of power collection to be plus 2 instead of plus 1. The next harmonic cipher mod with powerful attraction will allow you to create orbs of power and also collect them fairly fast. Adding just one strand surge mod for a 7% damage buff and a time dilation mod will enhance your weapon's performance by just a bit more. And lastly, heavy ammo finder, scavenger and reserves are recommended like always. So as we have covered the main exotic weapon in use, these are the following weapons to support the build that I have personally chosen. For secondary, I have the plug one with adaptive munition and reservoir burst, which is a handy fusion rifle capable of taking out multi-shield types all at once, while also detonating an arc explosion upon final kills. This will be useful for when things get hectic and the AUD gets swarmed. Heavy is recommended to have sword to support the use of the banner of war, however in my case I chose to get Mercato 45 with slice and onslaught. Using Onslaught and Onslaught, no puns intended, will give us a massive increase in fire rate that does lead to a higher damage via DPS, but this does require kills to activate. A slice on the other hand will see huge usage when activating our class ability and wanting to reduce an enemy's output on a consistent basis. Remember, we also have Threat of Isolation available that does the same thing, Bomb Precision, so this overall should make the endgame bosses we fight a whole lot more easier to endure. So of course, we have covered this build multiple times before, since the moment of Banner of War was made available and since Precious Scars got its buff. And the thing is, this build is genuinely really good if you want something that support and protects all in one. I like to say this build is baby proof, generally because even the baby can use this and doesn't require a lot of input or focus to maximize its strength. You can either net kills and trigger Precious Scar's healing effect there and then, or you can get a mini kill and trigger Banner of War there and then. You can mix and match if you like, but the build is pretty straightforward for everyone involved. You don't need a degree, or even a bachelor's, or anything really. The build is designed for survival of mind, and by god does it do it well. And you know what? I think everyone should at least have this type of build on the team. As once you enter the harder waves, it does become a lot more difficult to protect the AEU and your teammates all at once. Yes, having Tether Hunter with Orpheus Riggs is the answer to both life and death, but it's only useful once the user has a super available. I know, that might sound dumb, but considering how RNG some of the waves can be at times, and how enemy types may require more focus than the others, it does put a lot of pressure on for the solo hunters who need to stay alive. A strand titan with the capability of providing well of radiance while on the go will not only make the run more smoother, but pretty much makes everyone more safer and riskier as long as you are around. Whatever weapons you use here will generally not matter, as the aspect in Zotic alone is more than enough to spoil your ideas. This is easily one of the most effective ways of keeping your team alive in a number of hard content where specific builds are required. Now, to make myself clear, you can still die if you get hit by a heavy attack, take too much damage from all angles, which you will suffer a lot of, play activity under leveled, or use weapons that generally don't fit the build at all. Unlike GMs, where there are some restrictions to using the build, Onslaught Legend and Normal will see great success with the build and users alike. So give this build a try if you want that wave 50 banner on legend and have fun. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these in the future then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available 
covering all types of builds you desire. It was a great show in today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.